Hi, it's Thibaut Schwartz for the second video on the grasshopper definition used on my automated fondom project. Um, so in the first video we s we took a look at this part of the definition which, uh, which was basically generating the geometry and the nesting of the um, each part for the pavilion. And in this second video we will take a look at this part. Uh, which is generating two paths and code for the robot. So, first step is to uh, choose what part I want to fabricate. So here we will, for example, we will fabricate this one, 5-5. Five five. So I can choose the part with the, um, the ID, or I can also choose um, in the nesting, I can also uh, choose uh, by panels and by dimension of panels, extra. So I have several options here uh, to find the good panel I want to, the good part I want to fabricate. Uh, here I have a little log that uh, is telling me that uh, the my panel is standard with six faces, uncut six faces. And these are the dimensions of the bonding box of this part. So after this, after that, I have to enter the um, true dimensions of my foam block that I will use for the fabrication. So uh, my foam block is yeah, oh, sorry, uh, one hundred fifty-five on. Uh, 325 millimeters. Okay, so here, as you can see, the um, the true dimensions are quite uh, important because all the out uh, out paths and also all the collisions detections is uh, working with the true true box dimensions. So after that, uh, I have to take a look at the um, at the code to see if there is any problem. So I switch in code generation mode because I here I have two uh, modes for my uh, debug. I have the toolpath preview, so I can choose uh, any positions in my toolpath uh, and just to see what problems can happen. And in code generation, I don't have preview, but I have logs in here, for example, that is telling me that the um, position number 124 is not accessible, not reachable. So I will now take a look at this uh, target. Yeah, as you can see, uh, I cannot reach it. So maybe I can uh, modify the orientation of the tool. Okay, so now I lowered a little the the tool orientation target for the top uh, top uh, rules. So now it's working better. Um, maybe I have problems of rotations. Yeah, here as you can see, the fifth axis is out of rotation for the uh, out of its domain of rotation for the target number sixty-two and targets number. 120 and, and 100, oh sorry, 121. So, uh, we'll take a look at those. Yeah. So on the right side here, I have to modify the uh, target for my tooling, for the orientation point I use. So, yeah. Okay, here as you can see, I don't have problems of rotation anymore. Uh, so that's okay. And here for the f fourth axis, just for the moment, uh, and some incoher incoherence with my uh, inverse kinematic solver, but it doesn't matter. The fourth axis is good. So uh, if I want to. If I want to modify some stuff now in my toolpath, 
I can modify the subdivision of the, the toolpath. For here, as you can see, each face is divided by 50 um, rules. So it's a good resolution for the fabrication, but I can increase or decrease it. Um, I can also set different heights for the outpass here oh, sorry I can um, set different margins for the approach moves I can do the same here for the uh, out uh, bottom path so and here as you can see I have an, another debug utility which is telling me that uh, be careful because the um, the margins here for the out are not sufficient uh, otherwise you will cut the part when you will try to put the tool out of the panel so I have to increase here my margins okay um, what can I do uh, I can also um, I can also yeah this is an important point I did a little algorithm to uh, to ease the um, the, the cutting on the top so for example if I take a look at my targets that are here as you can see the targets on the top face are um, not in the middle of the part it's for a very simple reason uh, it's to avoid the tool to be uh, out of reachability the position to be out of reachability because otherwise if I don't modify the orientation of the targets on my toolpath I can do it as you can see then I can have problems of collisions between the tool and the part or between um, the tool and the robot problems of reachability also I also already s uh, said that and yeah and I want to avoid all these things so I set this little utility which is quite cool I also have a possibility to um, set different order for the cutting for example uh, top sides top plus sides reverse the fin, use the sides cutting first or not um, I have also two different modes here uh, one is cutting and the other one is debug so the variation between both is just uh, the uh, speeds so for example here if I am in debug mode I can uh, copy my code put it in robot studio and uh, do some tests okay so it's quicker than in reality but it's just to take a look at the orientation of the robot and eventual problems okay so now that everything seems to be good I can do a collision test so I launch it it's taking a few seconds okay so here I have uh, collisions on the side of the panel and so I can take a look at the target number 125 because it's here that 
the collisions start to occur. So yeah, so it's due to my margin here, which is uh, too important. So maybe I can reduce it a little. Okay, I still have some, so I can correct it with the reorientation of the targets. So now you understand the imp importance of the this little utility to re reorient the rules on the top. Now let's go back to the code generation, do an, a new uh, collision prediction to see if this, there still are some. So I still have collisions on position 126 and 127. Here, okay. So now it should be good, just to be sure. Yeah. So last test, and it should be perfect. Okay no collisions anymore. So here, for example, the toolpath is is good. And the code which has been generated can be used here as final instructions for the fabrication.